Have you stumbled across a situation where two people are merged incorrectly in your family tree? Today, we're gonna walk through how to fix bad merges on the FamilySearch family tree. How do they happen? The first thing that happens is that users of FamilySearch are doing very, very shallow research. They may only be looking at a parish record in England that said Richard Richard married Mary Tripp and they had a child named William. Well, did you know that there are quite a few Richard Richards and a number of them married Marys and they had sons named William? And if you don't go and look at lots of other records such as census enumeration records, um, baptismal records, death records, and other things from this parish, you're going to confuse people. So a lot of the problems that you're going to find on your tree being all messed up is because people didn't do deep enough research. And that is also related to the fact that people with the same name get combined together often. I have an ancestor who people think the name is original, Dorothy Zumstein. I have another, Effingham Townley. There are multiple people with that name living about the same time period. And if you don't look at other identifying pieces of information, you're going to tangle up the tree. So how do we go about fixing bad merges? So I talked to my colleagues over at Family Search, and they wanted to make sure that I explain this before I teach you how to use the Unmerge tool because we don't want you to make mistakes that other researchers or yourself will regret later. So let's make sure you understand these things and then we will hop over to the family tree to show you how to actually put this into action. The first thing you need to know about a merge uh, that you want to break is what happened when the merge was created. So you have Sally one and she has some facts and sources. And then there is Sally two who has some facts and sources. And somewhere along the way, someone said, these two Sally's are the same person. So a merge took place. And when that merge took place, you have Sally one that has the facts from both the Sally one and Sally two, but Sally two, she's not deleted. She hasn't disappeared. She's just disconnected from everything else. Because what happens later if you decide, oh, Sally one and Sally two really are two separate people and I need to split them. The beauty is if you have recently created this merge or if you've made no changes to Sally once since that merge, you can easily hit an unmerge and separate the two people. Sally one will retain her sources and Sally two will retain her sources. But what happens if after you merge Sally one and Sally two together and you added more sources to Sally one, but now you need to split Sally 2 off. What happens then? Well, Family Search can split off the original sources that went with Sally 2 that you had migrated into the merge. Those are going to go back no problem with a click of a button. But those, the blue facts, the new facts that you found after that merge or other researchers have found after that merge, Family search doesn't know who it goes to, so it just keeps them with the person that had survived the merge. If you need any of those facts and sources to go over to Sally too, because they actually belong to her, then you're going to have to detach those facts and sources from Sally one and put them over on Sally two. So let's go to the computer and show you how to unmerge two individuals. This is Dorothy Ann Zimstein, and I know her because she is my grandmother's sister, so my great aunt. As I scroll down the profile, I see some of the facts that I know about her because I've done uh, quite a bit of research for her. I know that these are her parents. This is my professor Zimstein that taught at Ohio State University, Michigan 
you know, the University of Michigan and the University of Iowa, but it wasn't called that back then. If you know what the University of Iowa was called in the 1920s, let me know in the comments. That'll be a fun challenge. In any case, all of this checks out, big check mark, right? And these are her children, they're hidden. Now these folks are in my private space so I can actually see them. Um, this one right here is deceased so anybody can actually see him. Um, but these two are deceased so everybody can see them as well. In any case, all of this checks out. What doesn't check out is this Richard Zeman. And not only does it not check out, but she is married to both men at the same time. There are some stories about Dorothy, but that's not one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of an investigative research. And I'm going to go to Last Changes Show All. And what I'm looking for is something like this. There's a surviving person, a deleted person, and this option to unmerge. And sometimes it's said restore. Either one works. And I also want to see when it happened and who did it. Now, this is just a training video. So yes, I'm the one who messed it up and that's okay. And sometimes you're going to mess it up and you're going to need to fix it. And Family Search makes that possible for you. No problem. Before we continue, I want to personally invite you to our live streams. They happen every other Friday. Be sure to check the channel page of Family History Fanatics to make, find out when we have the next live stream or sign up for a newsletter so you'll never miss another episode or when we go live. So what you now want to do is think, okay, so how did this go wrong? When I start looking at some sources, there is this problematic one, view source. Dorothy is immigrating through Vermont, United States. Well, when I looked at the original profile for this Dorothy Ann Zostein, she was in Vermont and she does have a child who's deceased. But all of this, what's happening with her is based on that Vermont immigration record. So somebody came along over on this Dorothy's profile, saw that immigration record and say, oh, that was for my relative. Shallow research because there are no other sources on this profile, none. But when you actually look at the immigration record, you're going to see some of those details that pertain to my family. So we have a Dorothy Ann Zunstein. She's six weeks old from Wellinport, Ontario, Canada. She is going to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Now you know why I told you about my grandfather at the beginning. He taught at Michigan, the University of Michigan, which is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, for those of you who don't, actually, don't know. And that's okay. We have an international audience. But the father's name is Robert Zemstein and his address in um, Ann Arbor. And they were visiting Robert Zemstein of Wellinport in Con Ontario. Well, if we go back to this tree, you would see that Dorothy, Robert Victor, and then if we go to Robert Victor, we're going to see that his father's name is Robert Walter and Robert Walter is from Well and Point. So now I need to unmerge. Why did I go through all of that instead of just go straight into how to unmerge? Well, because the family search family tree is a working tree. People are peer reviewing each other's research. And if you don't know much about peer reviewing, I have some links in the description that you're gonna wanna check out from my blog about peer reviewing. In genealogy, we need, if we think something's wrong, we need to try to figure out where the mistake was made because then when we actually unmerge, we need to tell everybody else who's using family search why we are making those changes. If you're not willing to tell people why you're making changes, then don't go unmerging people. I would say just tell people why you made the changes. Now we know, this merge was improper, we're gonna go ahead and walk through the process of unmerging them. And Family Search has actually made this relatively easy. Over here in the last changes column, 
or a box, we're going to go back to the change source list or the change list. And notice there's this little box. It could say restore or unmerge, whichever is uh, more appropriate in your native language. You click on that. And now it's going to show you there was the surviving Dorothy is the one that we show online. And on the left is the person that was deleted. And really, not she's not showing up in search. She's just been combined with Dorothy, the one that survived. But we want them to separate. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave a reason this should be unmerged. Something better than eh, there was a little information. So what I did in my notepad is I wrote something based on the census records, immigration records, and personal accounts from Dorothy Ann Zemstein, the one that survived in her PID number right there. She married Howard Merritt and is the daughter of Robert Victor Zemstein. She never married Richard Zeman, which is the one that's connected with this profile. There is evidence that Richard did marry a Dorothy Zemstein and had a daughter, but his wife is different from the one who married Howard Merritt. That's good enough if you have other suggestions on how to make it more clear. But that's the great thing about family search is we can constantly go back and strengthen our statements. But that's good enough for now. And I click Unmerge. And when I'm done, I will have the change log and it will say Unmerge in my version of Dorothy. And it will have that nice reason statement of why the, unmer the Unmerge was correct. And then this Dorothy is restored and people can start adding sources and documentation for her. I hope this video helps you know how to unmerge individuals. If you find out you have to remerge them again, the process is simple. Make sure you check out my video about how to merge people together right up there. And if you want more tips and tricks on using family search, be sure to check out this playlist right here. Have you stumbled a...